Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live webinar. As you know, I'm your host, Megan Anderson, and today's special guests are Ryan Grant and Danny Harani from the Art of Home Ownership, whose mission is to empower loan officers and realtors to build stronger relationships through education and technology. And today, today, they're going to teach us how to stay unforgettable. Welcome, Danny and Ryan. Thank you, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Happy to be here. It is great to have you guys on another live session. And for those that are, you know, tuning in here, I kind of have a threefold question for you guys to start off. First question is, why is it so important to be unforgettable? And what is the art of home ownership and how does it help do that? Great question. You want to take that? Well, you know, I'll start with why it's important to be unforgettable. And I think part of this is pretty intuitive um, and certainly not rock and science, but what really surprises us at Art of Home Ownership is how infrequently people act on the knowledge that being remembered by your past clients is one of the hardest things to do in the mortgage industry. And one of the things that Ryan has said uh, many times is so many people run their business like a lawnmower without a bag where you know, they're just mowing down the grass and it's just flying out the other side. And every month they wake up with the zero pipeline and wonder why they're always on this hamster wheel and in this grind, and they haven't figured out how to annuitize their business. So what becoming unforgettable allows us to do is, and there was, there was a study done that showed that there was this spectrum between forgettable and daily habit. And unfortunately, mortgage and real estate transactions often fall into that forgettable zone, which is greater than one year of frequency of transaction. And that daily habit or weekly habit is really just missed um, inside of our industry. And what that means for all of us here, all of us mortgage professionals that are really committed to providing maximum value to our clients and to grow a really healthy and annuitized business is that we are missing out on that lifetime value of the client. Right. And we're not setting our business up for success and our clients up with a plan to achieve that success with us. Would you add anything uh, to that? I mean, when, you know, Megan, you asked what the art of home ownership is. You know, when we initially set out to create this in 20, late 2018, early 2019, you know, the premise was that we believe as an industry that we are helping people by providing them the debt that allows them to buy a home. And Unfortunately, I think the mortgage industry makes the assumption that once that transaction is done, that that client's going to know exactly what to do and have the education to convert from someone who owns a home to someone who would consider themselves a, su a successful homeowner. And that term successful homeowner really had never been defined to that point, right? Because we didn't teach that in our society anywhere. And so we really wanted to feel inspired by the work we were doing. We wanted to be fulfilled with the way that we were helping our clients and I believe that just selling them the debt that is necessary for them to buy that home is a small component of helping them grow their generational wealth and achieve financial freedom and do things that, you know, society typically won't help them do. So we, we created the platform where we have a suite of services and an experience that the client gets before, during, and after that really helps them, you know, navigate the inevitable changes and evolutions in their life. And we become the de facto family office or the group that is committed to helping them accomplish things in their life they wouldn't accomplish otherwise. So we're excited now to have the rollout of our new uh, client facing app because it's a tangible product that people can can really get into. So uh, really excited to talk more about that. Can I add just one thing really quickly, Megan, because I think this is an important thing for this audience in particular is that if you're on this, you know, live session with us today or watching the recording, it's because you're part of a community that believes in providing a higher level of advice, right? You've decided for your business that you're going to bring this customer on a journey with you before and during the transaction. And what Art of Home Ownership does is then extend that commitment out further, right? 30 years beyond. And we learned from Barry, you know, many, many years ago, the idea of really serving that customer, selling two loans at a time and how to do that. But then the, there's this big gap of execution that Art of Home Ownership is looking to solve that allows that to, to come true for the clients and for our businesses. 
you know what I love too is I feel like I have been part of this kind of journey. I remember I did Amplify back with Ryan. This was years ago. And at that time was when you were kind of determining that language that aligned with the purpose of Art of Home Ownership. And it hadn't even been launched yet. And, and now the fact that you guys have come out with an app. And listen, I've been dying to see the app. But obviously, you know, I can't get into the app. So I really would love if you guys could share a little bit about this new technology that you came out with. Yeah, we were really excited to do that. Uh, I think maybe it'd be best to kind of share my screen and I'll, I'll kind of walk everyone through the presentation here if that's okay. Perfect. All right, so, and I won't go through the, the full long version of this. I'll do the shorter version and then if people want a, a deeper dive, they can connect with the team of the Art of Home Ownership. But, Effectively, what we found in the last three years of, of doing the Art of Home Ownership is that the suite of services were great. The commitment that we have to the client was really valuable, but it was a little bit far away because the client couldn't hold it. They couldn't touch it. They couldn't feel it. They couldn't interact with it uh, other than kind of on their own accord. And so, you know, we, we looked at this and, and said, okay, well, how, if we're going to change the mortgage industry, how do we do that? And the, the first analogy we came up with was kind of the horse and car analogy. There's a reason why all of our clients, for the most part, ask for low interest rates, right? They want low interest rates. They want low costs. Because if you go online and you type in how to find the best mortgage lender, you just get 30 pages of costs and, and rate. Uh, if you go online and put in how to become a successful homeowner, the internet doesn't even know what that means. So you get 30 pages of cost and rate. And so Henry Ford said, if you would have asked my clients prior to the car launching what they wanted, they would have all just said faster horses because that's all they knew to ask for, right? They didn't, know, they didn't know cars were a thing. Now, it took from 1907 to 1932 for there to be more people using cars than horses, which is insane, right? Because cars are quite obviously better to use than horses. It just, it takes time for people to replace old habits. And we believe that Art of Home Ownership partners can be the cars of the mortgage industry, right? Like people won't ask for lower rates when they know that, Art of Homeownership partners offer what we offer, right? They'll start to demand who we are and what we do because people don't need low rates, right? They, what they need is a team and a committed group of people who are going to give them advice and guidance and help them, you know, accomplish financial feats that they wouldn't have accomplished otherwise. So I like to kind of start off with that analogy because it helps frame what we're trying to accomplish, right? We're trying to shift people's thinking away from cheap into value, right? Like cars are very much more expensive than horses but I think you would also argue they're very much more valuable. So um, the way that we've done that is we've really looked at, okay, well, first off, how much is your client database worth? And I, unfortunately, you know, Danny used my lawnmower without a bag, you know, analogy, which is very much a transactional relationship. And so when we look at the average number of mortgage related transactions in a borrower's life, we need to figure out how many of those that we're going to be a part of. Right, so over 40 years, the average transaction is 11. Right, so if you're in this business for 30 years, you should get you know, maybe eight of those. And then as you succession plan your business, your team should get the rest. The challenge is we are waiting, Megan, we're waiting for our clients to decide when and how they should do each one of these things. Right, like we're hoping that they come up with the idea and concept of buying, selling, and refinancing a home. And then hoping that our marketing somehow keeps us close enough to where they reach out to us. Mm -hmm. And it's a flawed system of doing business, right? There's a reason why we are attracted to certain businesses is because they keep us engaged. And at Art of Home Ownership, our commitment is that we are going to connect with our clients on a proactive basis. And we're going to be the one to help them figure out when to buy, sell, or finance a home. So each one of these 11 transactions should be planned out in advance by us and that client. And we should just work with them towards it on their way. And the reason I know this to be true is because, you know, Danny and I get to, to speak at a lot of mortgage conferences and we always ask the question from everyone in the room, and it's usually real estate and, and mortgage professionals in the room. We say, who in here is hundred percent confident in everything you're doing in real estate or mortgage right now? Guess how many hands go up? None. <laughs> You get like an alligator arm and like people are kind of looking around. <laughs> right now. Um, but, and I always say like, I, team, if, if, if we are real estate and mortgage professionals in this room, if we are not certain of what we're doing in our own real estate and financial lives, what do you think our clients feel like? 
And why are we waiting for them to figure it out, right? Let's, let's make a higher level commitment to them, right? That we are going to help them do things that they wouldn't have done otherwise, right? So that's really what our, our platform does here. Um, there's what's called a, a frequency of use uh, case, right? Or a transaction and interaction frequency spectrum. And this kind of shows it a little easier here, which is, you know, when you, when, when you engage with a company on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, you, that company becomes a part of your habitual life, right? So let's use Amazon, for example, right? You're using it weekly, daily. My wife uses it hourly, right? So there is, it's now become a part of our life, right? Same thing with Zoom, which we're on today. Same thing with, you know, social media sites. But the farther you get away from your use frequency, the more forgettable your product becomes. And in the mortgage space, we are now seven to 10 years in, in transactional, you know, kind of a spread out transactional. Now, if rates come down, if affordability becomes easier, that, that may lower, but it's almost impossible to get clients to remember us or engage with us when we don't have anything to offer them. And that's where we need to stop thinking of, of offering transactional services. And we need to start offering, you know, really value-based relational products, where, which, which is really what Art of Home Ownership does. Anything you want to add to this? You know, the only thing that I would add, and, and I think it's pretty clear from that previous slide that, you know, again, I'm going to just emphasize that for this particular audience, right, the tools that we all have available to us really are designed to set up those 11 transactions in advance, but then we fall onto this slide, which is we set it up, but then we go right into the forgettable zone. And it takes a massive amount of energy, effort, and money for us to bring our clients back to the table. Yeah. So what we've done here is we've created the, the Art of Home Ownership app, which incorporates all the Art of Home Ownership services and a lot more that clients really need, right? All the services that you're seeing here, right? So again, when you talk about, and I won't read this, but when you, when you help people understand what it means to be a successful homeowner and you zoom out and you, you, know, you start, Megan, if you're my client, if I start talking to you about the next 30 days of our transaction, you're going to very much zoom in on the next 30 days. But if I open up your scope of vision and start telling you the things that you didn't know, right? Solving problems you didn't know you were going to have, providing solutions and value that you didn't even know you needed, right? Now we get them to zoom out and realize, okay, what I thought was I just needed a low rate. But now what I realize I need after talking to an art of home ownership professional is I need a commitment from a financial institution that's going to help me you know, do things that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Can I just add really quickly to that as well? Team, it also requires you to zoom out on your business. And instead of operating a month to month operation, you're zooming out and becoming an entrepreneur, right? You're growing a legacy, right? R Ryan um, kind of glossed over this idea of, and when you succession plan, your team should get the rest of those transactions, right? The other three of the 11. Well, think about what that actually implies, right? It implies you grew something of value that you could transition, right? That's what being in the habit forming zone and having a newitized business can actually do for you. Yeah, that's a good realization. So, you know, we become the solution to the problem that people have. They just didn't know that they had it, right? Because again, they just wanted to buy a home, live in it, and pay for it. And the rest of their life would magically work out, which is not working out for 99% of America, right? So this app keeps us in front of our clients on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And you can see kind of some of the snapshots on what the client sees as they're utilizing it. But the... The premise here is that they get to create and manage budget, track and learn credit, increase credit scores, um, home projects, so I'll walk through all this quickly. Uh, but our clients are gonna connect all their financial institutions, right? Their credit cards, their bank, their bank statements, their 401ks, anything that is an asset or a liability is gonna be connected through here. So think of like a mint.com or a Wealthfront or you know, these budgetary apps, but now you get it with a human being, right? There's, there's no one on mint for you to call or talk to, right? There's ads where you get sold things, right? And you can get sold credit cards and all sorts of other stuff, but there's no real advice or guidance behind it, right? There's nobody that they can connect to other than, you know, the internet cloud where out there it's, it's scary, right? But when they see your face as their mortgage professional and 
by and large, they're de facto financial professional, right? Because 99% of America is not going to connect with the financial planner, right? They, they feel a lot more comfortable engaging than they would with those other platforms. Um, they can, again, track and improve their credit score real time, right? So they just put in the last four of their social security number and on a daily basis, they will, you know, they can look at their credit information. They can play around with it. They can simulate scores. What happens if I open a credit card? What if I pay off this debt? What if I open a new debt? And that's something that most consumers just don't have access to. Now they may get something they pay for through a credit card or something else, but they don't ever go use it, right? They, they just get surprised every time. And I did a, a social media post the other day, there was this viral video that went out on TikTok where this woman uh, was crying because her, she couldn't buy a house because she opened a $9 Home Depot credit card when she bought a can of paint. And I looked at it and you know, there's millions of views on this TikTok. And so I just put the first part of that video and I jumped on and did my own like second part of it. I said, if you were an Art of Homeownership member and you had this app, that would have never happened. Right? Like you would have been able to monitor your credit. It would have given you alerts. You would have been able to see what happens if I open a new credit card right before you did it and you could have simulated it. And 40 people who I've never met downloaded our app. So I adopted 40 new clients with one post about how, help, how we can help people. This was something as simple as tracking their credit score. That's amazing. And honestly, I think that it's a really good time to have an app like this with the high inflation and everything that we're saying. And I love that you told that story because that was actually going through my mind when you were telling me this. I was like, I wonder if they put in that scenario when they're about to purchase a home, it'll notify them not to take out that new credit credit card. So that's great. Absolutely love it. We do have a few questions based off of this feature. Is yeah. credit score a FICO score? Yeah, so you can see here it's a Vantage 3.0 score, which is you know more of a consumer-facing credit score. Um, so again, we want to you know it's it's backed by TransUnion, so it's one of the three bureaus. But we do want to let people know that the you know the FICO score could vary uh, you know a little bit differently, uh, and it's not a hard credit pull, right? It's soft based on the last four of, of someone's social security number. Um, and this is incredibly secure. They use the same type of secu you know, banking security that B of A or, or Wells or anybody else would use um, to ensure there's no you know no data breaches. I saw that in the second question. Great. Yeah. Okay. So um, next, this is one of my you know two favorite areas of the whole app. Um, what you see on the right here is what we call mortgage readiness, right? So, um, Megan, if you're my client, right, you can walk around with a full loan approval in your pocket at all times, right? So because you've connected your asset statements, because you've connected your income and your your employment, and because your credit is into the system, at any point. You could go look and buy a home and you could push all that information right over to our system and we have loan approval, right? Because we have day one certainty in all of these, in all of these products. What this does is it helps provide confidence with our clients, just knowing at all times they could buy a home if they wanted, right? They could go out and write an offer if they just at a whim, see something. And they don't have to go through the rigmarole of finding a lender and calling people and submitting documents and all this stuff because they have a, a loan approval in their pocket which is something that our clients have really appreciated. The thing that I believe is actually probably the most important part of our entire platform and our app here is our goal setting and our objective setting that you see here on the left side. Because again, our clients typically are not setting goals. Like for any of you watching or listening to this as mortgage professionals, even real estate professionals, how often has someone come to you and said, so I've been planning on buying a home for the last three years and I've been executing on that plan and I've been saving and I've been doing this and now it's time to do that. That ever happened, right? It's like, hey, I caught a wild hair and I want to buy a home, right? Or I'm moving or I had a kid or I got married or some external force or emotional force causes transactional opportunity. It's never calculated. It's never planned. So what we encourage all of our clients to do is set objectives, right? You want to improve your credit. You want to start saving. You want to start managing finances. Uh, I want to buy a home, right? And then what will happen is I'll show this a little bit later, but we can go to the back end of this platform as mortgage professionals, and we can see how many of our clients have goals. And we can see what percentage of the way they are to accomplishing that goal. So again, we're never surprised by a transaction, right? And we encourage people to set these goals, and then our teams reach out and follow up on those. I have so, a question on this real quick, if you don't mind. Good. So yeah. I love that you're getting them to think that bigger picture, right? Getting them to explore these other questions, these other thoughts. My question is though, you know, you said that 
the loan originator can go in there and see who has set goals and how far along they are in these goals. Is there also any like trigger automation kind of set up to notify them in case they're not looking at this? Like, hey, they're about to reach their goal, they're 90% or, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah, so within the app, it has, you know, push notifications that'll be sending out. Um, it'll have emails and, and we call them journeys. So based upon the journey they're on, they get data, they get feedback, they get information. And so we can create custom journeys, right? Or we can, you know, just let the system use their existing journeys. But, you know, the, the communication is really the important part in this objective setting process. And team, what, one of the things, and, and this might come up multiple times, but one of the things I really want to highlight here is, you know, picture yourself meeting with a new referral partner or even reinforcing and, and re-enrolling a referral partner you, that you already have with this value proposition. Like with this app, you know, with this commitment, I'm going to have your clients will be more confident, right? They will get in your car or they will be making offers faster, more often, and with a higher level of confidence. You know, is that important to your business? Is that important to our partnership? And just think about how that would differentiate you from the other professionals that are in your marketplace. Um, and we're seeing everyday feedback from our Art of Home Ownership professionals that that's absolutely a difference maker for them. Yeah, well said. Uh, and then maybe, Megan, how do you want us to handle the questions as they come in? Should we do that at the end after the presentation? Yeah, let's, I mean, the questions that are in now, unless it qualifies with a specific tool we're going over, go through the presentation, we'll save these till the end. Okay, perfect. So uh, the next part of the app that we love is budget. Right? Budget might as well be a four letter word. Um, it's something that we as a society just abhor doing, right? Like it's not something that we're gonna sit down and take the time because when people have monetary problems, they don't plan through them. They just stick their head in the sand and hope they go away, right? They just try and not feel it emotionally. So what this does is it automates budgeting and goal setting and you know, understanding how to you know, manage through your monthly costs. And so, you know, when we're, our clients are setting goals, right, they can look at their budget, they can see how much they're spending in certain areas, they can categorize certain things in easy areas. And so if we do this well, our clients will, you know, ideally be using this on a daily basis, right, like at least on a weekly basis, right, where they can sit down with their spouse or significant other and just say, hey, how are we doing? It looks like we're low on this, we're doing great on this, we're overspending here, we're not, you know, we're, if we have these goals, like, we want to give them these tools, because who else will? Who else is going to give them to like, who else is going to help somebody who do this unless they go actively search for it on their own, which we know is a, a very small portion of the population. Uh, next is our home concierge. So, you know, again, this is not a full demo of the art of home ownership, but the art of home ownership encompasses our home concierge, our monthly real estate wealth digest, our annual financial reviews, our perfect mortgage promise, right, our relocation technology, and encompasses all of the things that we do into one product. Um, there's a lot of mortgage professionals out there that they'll say, oh, yeah, I use that. It's like, okay, well, does anybody know you use that, right? Or is that a real value proposition or is that just a tool, right? So we've taken a lot of the tools that are best in class in our industry and we've packaged them into one client commitment. And one of the parts of that is the home concierge, right? So uh, a, a staggering stat is that 63% of all millennials and 48% of every homeowner has some form of regret within the first year of buying a home. And there's a lot of regrets that they have, but the number one regret they have is that they were not taught or they underestimated the cost of home maintenance, home repair, and home upkeep. And the average person pays $8,500 in, in the first year in that area. All right, so we have clients out there that are you know, trying to save $20 to $40 a month on their mortgage by finding the cheap mortgage, right? When the valuable mortgage can potentially save them $8,500 in the first year. Right? And so this, this app is, you know, through HomeBinder, it connects with all of our clients. It helps them understand home maintenance, home repair, home upkeep, uh, reminders, appliance recalls. It has, you know, maintenance reminders. They can share it with other people. Um, so all of this just helps people be better homeowners and not be reactive when their home breaks. It can be proactive, right? They, it keeps their appraisal, it keeps their inspection, it keeps their home warranty, it keeps any receipts or vendor contact information. And then what happens is when they go to sell their home, they can actually market it 
as a more valuable home because the buyer will then get to adopt this platform. So the buyer is like a Carfax for the house, right? And then the buyer gets to use all these services and, and you know, the seller gets to save money on you know, potential capital gains and all the other stuff as well. So um, something our clients really love and I, I actually use the service quite a lot for my home as well. Yeah, I got to say that is absolutely amazing. I've moved into multiple homes where it's so annoying because they don't leave the paint color. How amazing would it be right. if I just download an app and it's telling me everything that's involved in the house so I can make these repairs that you're talking about? I'm like, you yeah. got hands just. And the, and I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what that's worth, but I tell you it's worth something to the buyer who's, who's entertaining two homes right? Or three homes. And then one of them happens to come with the full history and then documentation of work done. And then all the vendors that work on that home and appliance information, like it is a difference maker. So listing agents love this when their clients have it, because it's just an added thing that they can be offering when they, when they market the property. Uh, next is our relocation services. So it's set up again within the app. So our clients, you know, when they're ready to move, they can forward their mail, they can update their driver's license information, they can set up TV and internet, they can schedule movers, they can set up all their utilities right through the app. Right? And so moving is the third most stressful thing in a person's life behind death and divorce, which is insane. Um, but when people say they have good customer service, I always kind of ask a qualifying question, which is, oh, great. Well, how do you help your clients save time, money and energy when they move? Because it's the third most stressful thing in their life. And they go, oh, yeah, we don't do that. That's like, okay, well, that should be something we solve for, right? Because again, we're trying to help them be a well-rounded, successful homeowner and moving from one home to the next is, is not an easy thing to do, right? It's, it's cumbersome, it's arduous, you forget a lot of things. So not only does this fully checklist your move and it timelines it for you, right? But it helps you take care of all of it right in one place, right through the same place where you're looking at your bank statement information, you're looking at your 401k, you're looking at your net worth, your value of your home, right? So it's a, a single source that keeps people coming back which again is more habitual, right? You want to keep them in that in that single source. And as, as mortgage lenders, we've never had the ability to do that, right? The only time you come back is if you need to refi or buy a home, which is a miss, right? Like we can offer so much more. Um, it also helps, you know, we can renovate their property prior to selling it, right? So they can connect right with our renovation team. There's no cost, there's no, you know, no interest. So if somebody wants to put 20 grand in their home prior to selling it, knowing that that's going to make them an extra 50 on the market because it brings it up to community standard or higher. Um, it allows them to do that. We can buy their new home for them all cash. We can buy their departing residence for them so they don't have to you know, daisy chain with contingencies. Right? So it really helps people rethink the strategy of really buying and selling real estate. Right? Like We can do it for you up and down the domino chain. Right? And we can help you, you know, save money, you know, get into the home that you want and not have, to, not have to pause when you find a home that really makes sense for you. So this is kind of the back end that I was telling you about of the app, right? So, you know, for anyone who's, you know, any Art of Homeownership partner, they'll have this and they can log in and they can see you know, how many active clients they have, how many new users they have. You can see Steve Johnson here, right? He's got his 25% of his way to his home goal. He's got his mortgage readiness in place, right? He's got uh, employment and payroll connected. He hasn't filled out his profile. We know his credit ban, right? So as we're following up with our clients, we don't need to follow up and be like, hey, Megan, just wanted to check in, see how you're doing. How's the family? Like relationship building is important. But if anyone's ever read the book, The Challenger Sale, relationships finish dead last in the five different avatars of salespeople. And the people who, who finish first is the challenger sale. Those are the people who add value. People didn't know they even wanted or needed, right? Which is exactly what we're doing here. So I'm not calling you, Megan, just to touch base and say hello and, you know, make sure we're, you know, I'm asking about your kids. Those things are all important. But when someone comes along and adds value to you, you're not really, you don't really care about the person who called and asked about your kids. You're like, wow, this is moving the, the with real economic value. This is helping my life, right? And so we can have a very different conversation in our annual reviews because I can see kind of what's happening in your world, what our goals are, and I can help you set and plan goals for the future. Yeah, not only that, but as the loan originator, like this is saving you massive amounts of time by having this information at your fingertips. Yeah, yeah, well said. So you can pull different, you know, reports, you can filter through different activities. Um, you know, you get to see here user credit band. And so this is where you get to like actually show someone 
your economic value. And we're actually coming up with a, a net worth number here. Uh, so we can kind of show people's net worth. Um, but if you come to me, Megan, and say, hey, you know, I'm working with another lender or two other lenders, and they both have low interest rates, why you? I can say, well, look, look at our average user credit band. Look at our average user net worth. And Megan, they didn't start that way. Right? Like our clients don't all come to us looking like sunshine and rainbows. But over time, we make them more successful homeowners. We create wealth that they didn't have otherwise. We help them with their finances in ways that other people don't. So I know what you believe you need or what you want is a low interest rate, but what you actually need is what we're offering. Do you agree? And people are just like, I've had one client who looked at me and she goes, if you're gonna do all this, we're not shopping anybody. Like this is, you know, if you're gonna like be a partner with us, we're in. But again, cars and horses, people don't know what we do exists yet. Yeah. And not only that, it gives you the data to be able to back that statement. You know what I mean? It's not just, oh, you know, I've helped all these families achieve home ownership, yada, yada. Like you have data on so many levels to be able to create and have those conversations or create that kind of content to drive new clients. Like it's great. And, and Megan, I do want to add just from the other angle, and I know I've kind of looked at this from this angle multiple times on this call, but as a business owner and somebody that's building a business, understanding what that average you know, metric looks like is very, very powerful, right? Because if you could look at this and say, well, you know, I'm, I want to grow a business. I want to know what my, you know, who should I target in my next you know, demographic marketing campaign? Right. Well, probably something that would look like the people that are already saying yes to you would be a good idea. Right. And so you have a, a much deeper understanding of your business and your numbers. You know, if you have access to this, you know, deep insight around your client base. Yeah. Oh, it's, sorry. Uh, yeah. It's such a great thing that you guys have put together. I have so much enjoyed seeing this evolve. Now, there is one thing that I do want to highlight. We have a lot of questions in the chat box, which I do want to go over, but not everyone can be part of the art of home ownership, correct? How do you mean? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's like a limited per region. Like you guys have a certain max amount. Yeah. So, when we created Art of Home Ownership, we realized that, you know, Danny actually calls it a, a weapon of mass destruction, right? Like <laughs> against any competitor, right? Because when, you, when you're an Art of Home Ownership partner, you're not selling the same product, right? Like you're, you're, you don't have to beat the competition. You can just simply make them irrelevant, right? Because, you know, most people are selling mortgages. We're selling a, a better financial outcome. And we realized that if, if everyone you know, if every mortgage lender in the country and every real estate agent in the country got onto the platform well then we'd all be offering the exact same thing right just to differing levels and so we said let's just limit it to a certain number of people in each metropolitan statistical area and let's really support those partners right and so essentially it's you know two mortgage professionals for every hundred thousand people in a market right so if there's a million people in an msa right we let 20 more uh, 20 mortgage professionals come onto that market um uh, that right I do yeah, that, that's, yeah so and once that msa is full we stop it right we say okay that's and then we'll have a waiting list for anybody who who wants to come afterwards um but we really want to put time and energy and, and emphasis into helping those people um you know and and frankly I don't think there's a lot of people who actually want to do this, right? If I'm, if I'm just really honest, there's, there's a subset of people in the mortgage space that really just want to sell loans and, you know, do their thing. And that's fine, right? Like there's no judgment there. It's what we've been doing as an industry for 80 years, but to the people who really believe what we believe and they want to help us fundamentally redefine what it means to be a mortgage professional, uh, we really want to support them and their business and their, their ability to, to offer this level of commitment and value to the client. Yeah, and the key piece there is really it's a it's about differentiation, right? That is the the value proposition. So you know, to the point that Ryan was making, right? That and actually, why don't you just jump into this? I just see you pulling up a slide that I think is super relevant. Yeah, I'm not going to go through this. I know I don't want to take too much time, but um, you know, the the reason that we we really want to help people understand what this is is that there's a kind of an inside game and an outside game to what we're doing. Right. So inside is how we feel and how we show up outside is how we're experienced by the consumer. Right. So 
since we've created Art of Home Ownership, I'll tell you, I was, you know, I was one of the top 25 lenders in the country for quite a while. But when anyone asked me what I did, I would be like, oh, I'm in the mortgage business. Because I just wasn't happy about being recognized for selling more debt than other people. And so when we created this, it created a mass amount of inspiration. It made my team and all of our employees feel safer in a challenging market because we weren't riding the same roller coaster as everybody else, right? Again, we were offering a, a very much different product. And we get to go home at the end of the day, we're really fulfilled with the work we were doing, right? Like when we say we're helping people, we are really helping people. We're not just completing a transaction because I used to say, you know, oh, I love helping people. And then I started realizing they didn't do their loan through me. They would just do it through one of the other 400,000 loan officers in the country. So if I really want to help them, I need to do more, right? And we need to, we need to do that. So the inside game's helpful there. And then I won't belabor on all these, but these are all the areas that we know it helps our, our partners, right? Yeah. They get to increase their conversion, database engagement, lead generation, because this is not just for people who close loans, Megan. Like you could sign up for this today, right? Like you could go to our, our website, you put your name and information in, you could download the app, you could use it, right? You could use all the different services. Like we will provide you more value than any lender that you've worked with in the past and you've never actually done a transaction with us, but you'll likely do one in the future. Yep. So all these different ways are helpful. And then um, before we finish, I just want to share kind of one closing story, but maybe should we answer questions, Megan, or how do you want to proceed? Yes, with let's go ahead. Let's answer some questions. But I also just want to say, and I want to mention here, you know, you mentioned that not, not everyone is going to want to do this, to put in that work, to go above and beyond and provide this. Well, one, I just want to say all the people from MBS Highway do not have that problem. We are all set up to want to be those true advisors at the end of the day. But also, you know, just take a look at the market. It is cyclical and we're going through some rough times right now. And by utilizing something like this, whether you use the app or not, like John said, he's doing a lot of this stuff in the chat box, but he's not using the app. That's great. But you know what doing this kind of stuff and going that extra mile does? It solidifies your relationship, not just with the client, but with your referral partners, with those builders, with the painters, with all these people that are involved in this process. So that when we go through these cyclical hard times, your business becomes bulletproof. This is so much more than just doing that one transaction and getting that business that one time. And I think that that is something very, very important to remember, because at the end of the day, when times get tough, if you're not going above and beyond, you're going to struggle a lot more than the person that has been doing this transactionally. Megan, can I just say that I mean, you you hit the nail right on the head. And um, those of you that don't know me um, should know that I'm a, a total nerd. And so I, I you know, think in, in um, you know, graphs and numbers. And when I think about the lifetime value of a client, that got a 2.75% interest rate relative to the lifetime value of a client that's getting a 5.75 interest rate, not only the number of transactions you can do as a mortgage professional, but the amount of value you can provide to them. If you actually make that commitment to show up and make the per perfect mortgage promise, what that can actually mean for that inspiration, safety, and fulfillment, now is the time to be building you know, that snowpack, right? That one rates come down, you have the ability to you know, with very low friction, you know, by pushing a button that says push data into my LOS system or POS system, uh, the, the amount of um, transactions you can put into your business, if you've set them up in advance, rather than scrambling and trying to figure out how you can just catch everything in the bucket and knowing that everything's falling out or spilling over, like we were all experiencing back in 2020, this is, this is going to solve a problem for you that you know you're going to have again. Yep. Amen. I've been telling everyone, you know, listen, at MBS Highway, we believe that we're headed for a recession. And when we look historically at recessions, rates tend to decline. Well, you know what that means? Every single purchase transaction you're doing today, that's going to become your refinance bread and butter business down into the future. And something like this app that allows you to have multiple touch points with that client and get notified and get triggered this is going to help tremendously making sure that you are the person that is going to get that transaction. Shifting over to some questions, Julie, I want you to know and everyone else to know, you will get the recording of this webinar afterwards. 
And um, let's see, we have some other things going on right now. Uh, can this be co-branded with referral partners? Yeah, great question. So in today's iteration of it, it is not co-branded. However, your realtors can become Art of Home Ownership partners as well. And they would get their own instance of the app, right? So they would be able to offer it to their clientele as well, along with all the other services which are co-branded, right? So um, that collaboration is, is incredible. Uh, and uh, our real estate partners need this just as badly as we do, right? If we think we need a value proposition, they, they need one also, right? They need to differentiate themselves in a highly commoditized industry. And, you know, whenever I meet new real estate agents and I present this to them, I always ask them, hey, what do you do for a living? And they're like, I'm a real estate agent. You know that. And I say, well, the next time somebody asks you, tell them that you're changing the real estate industry and then watch what they do. Right. And then you can explain to them how you're doing it. Right. Because any realtor will sell you a house, but not any realtor is committed to helping you become a successful homeowner. Let me explain that. And, you know, our real estate community needs that. They want it. And if we can be the providers of it, it's hugely valuable. Yeah, not only that, but I'm going to say that this app already is going to make your real estate agent's job so much easier. Sure. I mean, you were talking about, you know, things like the paint color and how to change the utilities and all of that stuff. Those are all questions that get directed to the real estate agents right now. And I can't tell you how annoying I made my real estate agent. She was so annoyed <laughs> at me asking these questions. She'd send one answer, then forget about me for a while. How much easier would it have been for her to just be like, download the app. It's all right there. Yeah, click the buttons. Yeah. Uh, Patrick wants to know if this can sync with CRM systems. Yeah, so right now it's syncing with one CRM system. It just depends upon the one you're using. And so our Art of Home Ownership team can help you understand how that works. Um, you know, there's a CRM component to the Art of Home Ownership that you can opt into if you'd like. Um, so we understand the CRM is a, a unique component to everybody's business. Some people absolutely love theirs and use it. Some people use napkins. Um, so we find the middle ground and help you understand how to use it most appropriately. Yes. And if you guys have a lot of questions that maybe we aren't going to have time to answer on this call, or you're just interested in joining the app, we did go ahead and put the link for a consultation in the chat box. I'm just going to read it in case you can't find it or whatever the case may be. It's just info.artofhomeownership.com slash consultation. And that will take you to where you need to go. Now, we have an anonymous comment here. Does our book of business stay private on this app? Yes. Yeah. So that's one of the core tenets of Art of Home Ownership is that we, we want this to be yours, right? It's your product. It's your website. It's branded to you, right? It's, you know, it's got your, it's an Art of Home Ownership app. So the client will see it, Art of Home Ownership, but it's your face, your information. Um, and if at any point you ever decide to, you know, to, to not be an Art of Home Ownership partner, we shut it all down. Nobody markets to your clients. You know, there's that, that data isn't, doesn't go anywhere else. Um, we really believe in the autonomy of the distributed retail mortgage professional and their ability to grow their business without, uh, without concern of big data coming in and taking over. So it's a, it's a key component of what we've done. I, I want to emphasize this because I think it's a really key point. Um, it, it, is, it is also contractually you know, mandated when you become an art of home ownership partner. So you'll see it there in black and white, but it is absolutely a core tenant of our ethos that you are the entrepreneur that owns your customer. And if anybody tells you otherwise, um, then th they have it wrong, right? Because yep. you are the one sweating and grinding it out every day to add clients into your business. Yes, absolutely love it. I think we also, with that, answered Jill and James' question as far as it being your contact information on things. Um, people want to know a little bit about pricing. Should we just send them to the consultation? I'm not sure how that all works. So yeah, that that'd be the best place to get an understanding because pricing is very specific on based on what people are already using, what services they're already using, how they're engaging with those services. You know, CRM, no CRM. So. We always want to make pricing a specific component to what they're doing. Um, I would ask people to, you know, see this as an investment in their business, not as a cost. Um, I think there's a lot of things that we pay for as mortgage professionals that you could call costs because you don't see return on investment on them. Um, this is definitely not one of those. I can tell you, you know, with, with all the confidence in the world that when I get to stand in front of a client or a real estate professional or, you know, a friend or an employee, 
And I get to tell them that I'm going to be the most valuable person in their life when it comes to real estate or finance for the next 30 plus years. And then I can show them how there's nothing more impactful, right? No low rate is going to beat that. No on time, quick close guarantee, nothing that we, you know, that literally every single one of us say, we just say it the same, but we say it differently. Um, nothing can compete with that. And this is a good question from Bobby. When, you know, clients are getting in and using this app, if they have questions, do those go directly, like regarding the app, do those go directly to that loan officer or do you guys have a support system in place that can help them kind of navigate the app, figure out their credit score, add stuff, all that jazz? Let me make sure I clarify the question. When someone downloads the app, is it tied to that person? Is that the question? No, like the client, like say I'm a potential homeowner or yeah. you know whatever, I'm in your system, I'm on the app. Now I'm going through and I want to you know figure out, okay, if I renovate this, like let's go plug and chug this in. Oh, I want to see my credit score, but I get stuck and I need help on how to enter this into the app. Do I call the loan officer that is associated with my account to get help? Or do you guys have a help people you know set up that I can call? Love that question. So if they want help with the strategy or the advice or guidance, there's a contact mortgage lender contact team, right? So they're going to do that. If they have technical questions, you know, they're, something's not syncing or they want to figure out how to use the app, there's a support team that, that handles all of that, right? So what we don't want is our mortgage professionals, you know, troubleshooting why, you know, Bank of <laughs> Omaha is not connecting with the app, right? So uh, we, we want to help our mortgage professionals not hinder them with IT problems. That's great. Um, all right. Jimmy wants to say hello and good stuff to you, Ryan. And What's up, buddy? How are you, man? He mentioned that it linked with the CRM, but you didn't mention which one. So right now, the, the one that it works through is Total Expert. Um, Daily AI is the one that we utilize through our phone ownership. Um, and that sync is being built and worked on right now. Um, others will come um, as we get more enterprise accounts. Um, so, you know, if one person's using it at a company, um, it's hard to really, you know, have the, the time and energy to sync that whole thing. Um, but you know, we'll work through that with everybody. Now, yeah. if it's a loan officer on this call, it's like, this is awesome. I want to sign up for this. I want this app, but they want to make sure that they really understand what that end user, that client is going to be seeing on the app. Is there a way for them to either view their portal through the eyes of a potential client or, you know, download it and check it out. Yeah, that's what the, the, you know, connecting with the Art of Home Ownership team will help everybody with is that they can show you how to experience it from the client's perspective, from, you know, from your perspective, they can, you know, you can log into the back end platform with them and you can kind of, they kind of walk you around and show you how it works. So I would just highly recommend, you know, spend 30 minutes to an hour with the Art of Home Ownership team and have them show you the impact this can have for your, you know, selfishly for you, but selflessly, like the, the significant change you can make in our society by committing to a, being a higher level mortgage professional. Absolutely love it. I have enjoyed seeing the process and the journey that you guys have gone on. And I, I honestly want to commend you guys for bringing so much passion and purpose to this space. I feel it. I can see it. And I think everyone that has joined today's call can feel it and see it as well. And I think from all of us, we want to thank you for bringing so much value to this space where it was needed. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. And uh, I'll just end with one quick story here with the time we have left. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a company called Virgin Cola. Um, and, and Megan, I don't know if I shared this back in the Amplify thing, so this may be new to you as well. But uh, Virgin Cola was created by Richard Branson, Virgin Airlines, Virgin Records, right? That whole Virgin Empire. And he started a cola company. It did really well in the UK. It beat Pepsi and Coke time and time again in blind taste tests. Brought it over to the United States, did this whole PR launch and started taking market share, right? Like started really impacting, you know, Coca-Cola's bottom line. And at first they just thought, okay, this is not going anywhere. But when they realized that it was, right, that it was gaining traction, they just used all of their money to push Virgin Cola out of the space, right? So they bought out the store shelves, they bought out the distribution and, you know, Virgin could not compete because they didn't have the money. The reason I'm sharing that story is because we run the same fate as independent mortgage professionals against the big 800 pound gorillas in the room that you guys can fill in the blank on those. 
Now, what would have happened is if the consumer would have went into the store and looked on the store shelves and said, hey, where is the virgin cola? Like, it's, it's better. I want that. And they would have went to the manager. The manager would have said, okay, well, I'm bringing it back. Otherwise, I'm going to lose customers to the stores that carry it. But that didn't happen. Right? They walked into the store. They looked on the store shelves. And they said, I don't see virgin cola. Oh, well, Coca-Cola is close enough. And they grabbed that and they left. We run the risk of being close enough, right? As mortgage professionals, we don't have the luxury of just being a little bit better. We have to be so much better and so much more valuable to our clients that people demand what we do because we're seeing it right now. The people with all the money, right? They can offer super low interest rates. They can offer payment services. They can buy data. They can get in touch with our clients. They can do things that we don't have the bandwidth or the money or the power to be able to do. But the one thing that will protect us as mortgage professionals is being so much more valuable that clients demand what we do and no amount of money can stop that from happening, right? We just have to, we have to commit to that. And so I would encourage you, if you want to be that valuable, right? If you want to be so in demand from your client's perspective, they won't accept anything less than what we've just gone through, right? They won't accept the click button, get mortgage, stay uneducated, you know, standard that we've created in our industry to, you know, connect with the team and learn more about it. And, you know, we'd love to love to have you help us change the industry. Well, that sounds like a mic drop right there. So we're going to leave it there. I want to thank you guys for taking time with me today. And thank you everyone for tuning in to today's webinar. And here's Thanks to you much. guys staying unforgettable. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Great to see you.